Section 7.6, solving radical equations. To solve an equation with a radical term, we're going to isolate the radical term on one side of the equation and use the principle of powers and solve the resulting equation. The principle of powers is not always true, so we have to make certain that we check any possible solution in the original equation to see that it works. In this first example, we have our radical isolated, so we're ready to use the principle of powers, which essentially says whatever you raise one side should equal, in most cases, raising the other side of the equation to the same power. It's not always true. That's why we have to be sure that we check our solutions. But essentially, this holds true. And it's going to eliminate our radical. Square root of x times square root of x is square root of x squared, which is essentially the radicand. 7 squared is 49. There's nothing to do to solve, so we believe our solution is 49. And the check then would be to replace the variable with our value and see if we do get that expression. Recall when we take the square root or have an even index, we always are looking for a non-negative solution. And so the square root of 49 is 7. And we have a true result. So our solution to this problem is 49. In this next problem, our first step always is to isolate the radical. That's already done for us. To undo a square root, we will square it. And what we do to one side, we do to the other using the principle of powers. Squaring a square root or a radical with an indice of 2 means we are going to get our radicand. On the right hand side, 36 is the result of 6 squared. And the only thing left to do to get y or our variable by itself is to subtract a 3 from each side. And we end up with y is equal to 33. Before we are done with the problem though, we want to make sure that that does work because of the possibility that the principal powers is not always true. And sometimes it generates what we call an extraneous root, a solution that doesn't work. But let's see if it works here. Replacing y with 33 plus 3 into the original equation, we'll see if it does in fact give us a result of 6. Well, 33 plus 3 is 36, and the square root of 36 is 6. So we can accept our solution for that particular problem. In this next example, they're asking us to solve this radical equation. And right off the bat, we have a problem. When you take the square root or an even indice, we always are looking for a non non-negative solution and they're asking us could this be equal to a negative 4? Because it's a negative there is no solution that would be possible to the square root. Had it been a cube or a fifth, some odd indice, we would be able to do something and come up with a possible solution. In this next radical equation we do need to make sure that our radical is by itself. The radical is has a subtraction of 5y, and if we squared both sides, we would end up having a binomial here. And if we can avoid that, that's what we're going to do. And that's why it's important to isolate your radical term on one side of the equation before you use the principle of powers. So having said that, I'm going to add a 5y to both sides to get the radical by itself. We now have the square root of 12y minus 1 on the left, and 1y plus 5y is 6y. Step 1 is done as far as isolating the radical. We're now ready to undo the square root by squaring using the principle of powers. We square both sides. Square root of 12y minus 1 times square root of 12y minus 1 gives us two of those, and the square root of a pair is that 
factor of 12 minus y, the radicand, 6y squared is 36y squared. We have different degrees on our variables. This looks like the makings of a quadratic equation that we are going to have to factor and use our zero product property. So I'm moving everything to the right, which changes its sign when we take a term to the other side. Positive 12y taken to the right becomes a negative 12y. Negative 1 taken to the right becomes a positive 1. And you can see that if you subtracted a 12y from both sides and added a 1 to both sides, we would have this result. Is it factorable? I recognize the first term is a perfect square. It's 6y. The last term is a perfect square. And for this to be a perfect trinomial square, we multiply the square root of the first and the last term and double it and see if that is the middle term. And it is. So this end up factoring into 6y with a 1, quantity squared. Both signs in our binomial are the same. Both are a minus. Solving this, we're looking for terms that equal 0. And since both of these factors are the same, and to help you see that, this is equivalent to 6y minus 1 times 6y minus 1. We have two things multiplied to give us 0 by the 0 property. It says that either 6y minus 1 equals 0 or 6y minus 1 equals 0. We have a redundancy here, so we only need to set one of these factors equal to 0 and solve to find the value that does result in a 0. So adding a 1 to both sides or taking that 1 to the other side gives us the following. And dividing both sides by 6 to get y completely by itself with a coefficient of 1 leaves us with a solution of 1 sixth. Is it a solution to tell that we would plug it back in and test to see if it gives us a correct or true answer? And I'm going to do my check above the problem so we can see what the original problem was. We're going to take 12 times y, which is 1 sixth, minus 1, minus 5 times 1 sixth, and see if it equals 1 sixth. Well, 12 times 1 sixth is 12 sixths. 12 six reduces to a 2. 2 minus 1 is 1. The square root of 1 is 1. 1 minus 5 6. To subtract those, we need a common denominator. 1 is equivalent to 6 6. 6 6 minus 5 6 leaves us with 1 6. Our solution is correct. Here we have another radical equation. The radical is by itself. We're going to next use our principle of powers to undo a square root. We'll raise each side of the equation by 2. Squaring a radical gives us the radicand of 4x squared minus x is equal to x squared. Getting our like terms together, subtract an x squared from each side, leaves a 3x squared minus x is equal to 0. We're left with factoring. We have two terms, and we're looking for a greatest common factor. We have an x common to both. That leaves a 3x minus 1. We have a product equal to 0. That means either the x is equal to 0 or 3x minus 1 equals 0. Solving for x on this one, since we already have this solved, we'll add a 1 to both sides. That leaves a 3x is equal to 1. And divide both sides by 3, we end up with x is equal to 1 third. So it's a possibility that we have two solutions. And let's see if these values work. 
if we plug in a zero in our original equation, four times zero squared minus zero, does it equal zero when we take the square root of it? Well, zero squared is zero, times four is zero, zero minus zero is zero, squared is zero is zero. It works. Zero works. Does one third work? Well, let's check it out. Four times one third squared minus one third does it equal one third if we replace x in our original equation. Following order of operations, one third squared is one ninth times four is four ninths. We have four ninths minus one third. One third, if I multiply top and bottom by three, is three ninths. And taking four ninths minus one ninth leaves us with, I didn't say that right, four ninths minus three ninths leaves us with one ninth. And taking the square root leaves us with one third which is equal to our solution. So that also is a solution to this problem. In this last one, we have a radical equation. Nothing says that the radical has to always be a square root. No problem. The principle of powers, as long as you raise both sides to the same power, we essentially maintain equality. Not always true, and that's why we're checking our roots, so we're going to raise, in this case, to undo a cube root, we'll raise each side to the third power. The cube root of something to the third power is that radicand of 4x minus 4. 1 to the third power is 1. Radicals are gone. Solving, we'll add a 4 to both sides. We end up with a 4x is equal to 5. Divide both sides by 4. We end up with x is equal to 5 fourths as a possible solution. Does it work? In our check, the cube root of 4 times our x, which is 5 fourths minus 4, do we get our 1? Well, the 4s would cancel out during our multiplication first. 5 minus 4 is 1. The cube root of 1 is 1. It is true, so we can accept our solution of 5 fourths.